It's no secret that the railways are one of the oldest forms of mechanical transport in the world. But as we look in awe at the engines, we seldom take thought at the rails underneath them. Rail maintenance is probably as important as the engines themselves. One of the most important tasks that the permanent way staff can perform is a process known as rail grinding. Rails have a very distinct profile and to the naked eye, the rails appear quite smooth. But it's surprising just how much friction the rails can make when a train wheel hits them. The engine has to overcome the large amount of friction in order to move. And this friction is so powerful that the train, over time, can quite literally change the shape of the rail. This, coupled with natural corrosion from the rails being out in the elements, will cause a phenomenon called rail corrugation and kind of looks like the inner of corrugated cardboard. Commonly known as roaring rails, it can cause, at the very least, a rather uncomfortable ride, but it can have a disastrous effects and even derailments. The ultimate destination for roaring rails is the cutter's torch, a rather large repair bill. The ultimate solution to this particular problem is a simple one. Rather than replace the rails when they are worn, a team of workers would use machines to grind them back to their proper shape. The job of railway grinding falls to network rail. The team would commonly work at night as they would require possession of the tracks in order to work. The main goal of the grinding process is to reshape the railhead back to its original shape by shaving the railhead down. At first, best specially adapted ex-coach stock was used, but over time specialist engines were created to increase the speed and efficiency. The quicker and smoother the rails, the less time the tracks will be under possession of the maintenance crew and the costs to all are reduced, especially in the reduction of cancelled and disturbed trains. So how does rail grinding trains work? Well, just behind the engine bogies sit several grinding wheels known as stones. These stones are coated in aluminium oxide which acts as an abrasive against the rails. The amount of oxide used is carefully tweaked and adjusted to give the most beneficial and efficient grinding. There are two types of grinding performed by network rail, preventative and corrective. Preventative grinding is done periodically and is designed to remove up to half a millimeter off the railhead. This is usually done firstly to iron out any unusual grooves, cuts and blemishes in the rail and ultimately allow for a smoother rail for less friction to be created and a smoother ride for the passengers. The corrective type of rail grinding is more invasive and the stones are manoeuvred to reshape the railhead back to its original shape. In corrective circumstances, deeper cuts are made into the rail. The whole process is measured by the Grinding Quality Index. The Grinding Quality Index is a specialist template designed to measure the rail profile before and after grinding and give it a mark out of 100. The software allows for minute, precise measurements to be made, ensuring the best results. Despite the shower of sparks looking spectacular, the process of rail grinding is a slow one, and depending on the size of the cut and the type of work undertaken, the train travels normally between 1 and 10 miles an hour. The work on the grinders is not all good. The grinders are noisy things and have caused several noise complaints as they work, especially in their use in around built up areas. The workers themselves are under risk on the train, not from noise, but from the grinders vibration. Total body vibration is a serious health concern. Excessive exposure of vibration can lead to pains in the neck and back and spondylosis which is a degeneration of the spine, leading to multiple illnesses, including arthritis. Lorem Engineering is considered to be the king of the rail grinding world. Lorem's parent company was started in the Americas in 1898, laying track and construction railway. But a 
40 years of construction had led the company from building rails to maintaining them. Up until that point, the work of track maintenance was down to individuals, so it was rather unusual for a company to take on the job, but it proved popular. The company started building equipment such as ploughs and auto tracks, which would realign the tracks in order to stop spreading. In 1969, after researching with a Black & Decker hand grinders, the company developed its first rail grinder. It was a small machine and only handled on-the-spot jobs, but it was self-propelled which made the work so much quicker. From this simple prototype, other rail grinders were built and in the 80s, thanks to an explosion in computing power, the first ever computerised grinders were born the RG8 and the RG10. Loram explored more with grinding technology and eventually developed a new engine that could tackle the tramways and transit systems as well as points and crossings. This saved days of work for track crews who would normally have to go over those areas by hands in many cases. In 2011, Network Rail bought three C44 rail grinders from Loram and shipped them to the UK. The engines can carry up to 64 stones in a single machine, but only have a 20 ton axle weight, making them very light comparable to their size. The first car, known as the control car, is the brain of the train. The driver can control the entire train and make minute measurements. They have 945 kilowatts of power at their disposal. The second car is known as the grinding car. This is where the stones are housed. The stones are connected in 16 modules, allowing for each module to be independent. You will also never find residue or polluting dust at the site of a grind due to the car's handy dust collection system housed within it. The final car in the train is known as the support car. While the control car is the brains, this final car is the brawn. It powers the grind car and, hand and provides over 1300 kilowatts of power. The cars can also be coupled together, giving extra power in heavily trafficked areas. Because they're a bit of a night owl, grinder trains are very rare and awesome sight. And even more awesome if you see them working. The shower of sparks are alarming, but the engines that run on the smooth rails in the morning are singing their praises. Grinder trains are usually kept in larger goods yards and it's quite common to see them in the sidings in York. If you want to see them in motion, I would check out Railcam as it has the most accurate details about where they are. But in the meantime, if you're travelling on the line, the lounge sounds unusually noisy or bumpy, you'll know that in a few days time, the line may be graced with a little visit from the rail grinder team. They are a secret team to keeping the rail smooth many years to come.